I now have the most wonderful pleasure of introducing two lovely, smart, attractive, capable females who are getting after it. First, Tucker Overchain, the youngest one, is Mark's daughter. The second is Audrey Jackson, who works with the Overchain campaign, has been working with the Overchain campaign. She does policy, she does outreach. She, is, she has never not returned a phone call or an email from me. And we need to get people out to vote and to know the, the policy of our candidates. They're going to talk to you about Mark the person and Mark the policy maker. And we're going to have some questions afterwards. And again, Suzanne extends her apologies for not being here, but she's where she needs to be with her father who is in the operating room right now. We need to stick to policy. We need to stick to issues. And that's what we're hoping the Attorney General's office can bring because it's an important, an important job. Tucker and Audrey, thank you. Well, thanks so much, Clarvo. We're so happy to be here today. And as she said, my mother is very sorry that she can't be here with you all today. But she is doing what she does best in taking care of her family. Um, so she's where she needs to be today. And I get to be here with you all. Um, and I was here a couple months ago, um, which feels like an eternity ago. You know? Um, during the convention um, process, and we have been hard at work since then, traveling the state. My dad is up in Northern Virginia today, and when he told me that's where he was going to be, I was not envious of him. I would much rather be here in Charlottesville today than battling traffic in Northern Virginia, so I'm very happy to be here with you all. But I just wanted to tell you all a little bit about our travels. Um, I guess the last time I was here, we probably had driven about 60,000 miles, and I think we're well over 70 at this point. We've been traveling all summer to the furthest corners of the Commonwealth. Um, I think the most recent, I guess, furthest trip was down in Southwest Virginia. Um, about a month ago, we went down into Southwest Virginia, and we spent three or four days traveling into the, the deepest, darkest mines in Virginia. We got to go down into two different mines in Southwest Virginia, which really just kind of opened my eyes um, to a sector of Virginia that's really hurting. And it not only impacts those people down in Southwest Virginia, but it impacts people across the Commonwealth. Um, it impacts ratepayers, it impacts businesses that are coming here, and getting to go visit those people um, and talk to the miners and talk to people who live down there and fight these battles every day was really, really encouraging for us and showed us that we're doing this to help people, um, and it, it gave me a sense of what my dad wants to do for these people, and it just makes me so proud of him. Um, but the best part about this experience is most certainly been experiencing the diversity across the state. Um, we are in different areas every day. We are in Tidewater one day, which is completely different from Richmond, completely different from from Northern Virginia. And I think that's the beauty of Virginia. It's such a diverse state. I know my dad is, is hard at work in a very different place than we are here today. So um, with that, I think I'm going to let Audrey tell you guys a little bit about policy. I'm generally the one sitting in the back taking the pictures, so I'm not used to being up front and talking. But I'm so glad that I could be here with you all today. And I'm going to turn it over to Audrey. Um, I like to stand in that back corner too and take pictures so being up here is a little different but I like to start talking um, to especially women's groups talking about how I actually got started in politics and I was working at the Rockingham County Fair which is where I'm from I'm from Harrisonburg like Tucker and I was assigned for two days to work with this guy named Mark who I knew nothing about other than that he was an attorney from I think it was Keeler Open Chain at the time and I thought well this will be fun you know I'm with a lawyer Hmm. So I didn't know what to expect. So I'm a young girl. I think I was 17, 18 at the time. And I uh, got there and I was putting stickers on everybody, working the crowd because it's just what I knew to do in politics. And, uh, um, you know, about the youngest person working at the booth, there were some other ladies sitting in the background. And 
Um, Mark came up to me and said, do you like politics? I was like, yeah, I guess so. It's okay. I was a, a history major at Eastern Mennonite University, and he's like, well, would you like to, uh, I'm running for Virginia Senate. Would you like to volunteer in my campaign? I was like, well, what exactly does that mean? And uh, he said, well, why don't you come make some phone calls and do some things? I thought, well, that'd be exciting. Well, before I knew it, I was knocking on doors every night, making phone calls every night, helping to uh, combat some uh, protests we were having. I was doing rallies, helping uh, the campaign manager organize th organizing things. And then he and his wife, Suzanne, asked me if I would start a college Republican club at Eastern Mennonite University. Thinking, as fun as that sounds, um, I uh, took on the uh, liberal agenda there at uh, Eastern Mennonite and started a college Republican club. And 12 years later, uh, I think seven campaigns behind me, a couple grassroots organizations, and I'm still in politics. I don't know how it happened, but I got the bug, and I can only thank Mark and Suzanne for all the fun that I've had the last couple of years, and they have been great mentors and friends through it all. And, uh, you know, I tell that story to folks for several reasons. One, I think it really shows who Mark is. Mark and Suzanne both are out there making sure that we continue the Republican Party, continue building coalitions of people who support the free market, keeping communities safe, and all of those things. Which leads me to talk a little bit about why we need Mark as Attorney General. There is no doubt that Mark is running for several reasons. You know, one, keeping communities safe has been a big message. And as you'll see in a commercial that will be debuted by this lovely lady today, um, and if you haven't seen it, go on our Facebook page and our Twitter pages and um, make sure you watch it. But we're talking about you know, keeping communities safe and making Virginia a good place to have and keep jobs um, successful here in Virginia. And Mark has a proven track, track record. You know, in the 12 couple of years that I've been in um, politics, and I hate to admit that, since I probably, I feel a little bit like Tucker's mom, considering I used to babysit her years ago. But since I am comfortable with my age, and I am coming under the standing of it, um, all the years that I've worked in politics, I've seen Mark work in the Senate for, to just actually defend these policies that he's saying. You know, we hear our opponents and other folks saying these things about Mark that just aren't true. Mark has been fighting to protect jobs, have been uh, fighting to keep communities safe. As Attorney General, he will do the same thing and make sure that our communities are safe. Uh, Mark just recently released um, uh, the third tier, I guess you can call it, of our safe uh, communities agenda, announcing that he's going to um, uh, fight and defend policies um, to combat child predators, cracking down on those who sexually abuse children, and better equipping families and prosecutors to make sure that we keep our communities safe. Um, part of the plan is to deploy child exploitation prosecutors regionally to better assist um, um, defending uh, those statutes, and uh, also making it a separate felony um, for internet uh, crimes or internet uh, abuse. Um, and additionally, he, part of that same safe communities plan, he is uh, including things to protect elder abuse. He announced uh, several weeks ago, gosh, it's been like five weeks since we announced that, I think about, um, where he announced it um, about keeping uh, elder abuse uh, at bay. I mean, we're seeing across Virginia uh, folks exploiting people who may not fully understand what's going on. Um, and also part of the safe communities is making human trafficking a standalone felony offense. We're seeing throughout Virginia this being a problem, and Mark is looking forward as Attorney General to stand up for those folks. Um, the Freelance Star up in Fredericksburg recently said that um, his proposal made, um, uh, highlighted several examples of, throughout Virginia, and that his proposal truly would make a difference here in Virginia. So those are a couple things that he's announced. Some of the things that you know you guys can share with folks of things that he's actually done as um, a Virginia State Senator. He was active in um, passing the Virginia Property Rights uh, Amendment, which passed. Gosh, this is part of Mark's sub speech, and I should know it after we've heard it. Fifty-seven percent. I think it passed the ballot by fifty-seven percent, um, roughly that. But people really true. Was it higher than that? Okay. Other than the seventies percent. Okay, whatever, that should, should know that number. But um, I don't quite have some speech mem memorized yet. But a high percentage of people in Virginia understand the importance 
of protecting our property rights. And that's, that's really the key here, regardless of how well it passed on the ballot. That's important, and Mark was one of the leaders to take that, that fight uh, right into Richmond. Um, he also, he also um, was one of the leaders in a, what we call the PLA bill, but um, prevents state funding from union-only contracts. And we see a lot of this throughout Virginia. And after March bill, the bid for the PL uh, union uh, agreement, which ended that, um, saved taxpayers about 400 million under that bill, which is excellent. Um, he also has a fault to repeal the state tax, has a uh, fault for a mandatory life sentence for child uh, rape and numerous other bills to protect children from predators, multiple bills providing tougher sentences for repeat drug offenders or drug dealers, uh, mandatory jail time for repeat violations of protective orders, and, you can, and re requiring colleges to establish warnings and notification systems. You clearly see a pattern of a man who wants to fight for safe communities and keeping uh, Virginia safe, and that's what we need him as Attorney General. So I think, oh, a couple other things I better say since I'm at a women's group. If you guys have not yet signed up for our uh, Women for Open Chain Coalition, it is um, headed up by Suzanne herself, along with uh, Mrs. Susan Allen and Mrs. Marty Kilgore. Um, and they have been traveling with Suzanne, and Suzanne's been doing an excellent job. I think she travels as much as, as Mark and Tucker. And I have to say, I got a nice promotion here from <laughs> Ms. James earlier. I'm not the political director. I do a lot of the telling them where to go. I do a lot of the scheduling and some of the political coordination. And so I can attest that they both travel and the 70,000 miles truly have uh, been put on. And uh, so I would really encourage all of you, I have some sign-up sheets with me. If you'd like to sign up here, you can sign up on our website at markovachain.com. Um, if you are on Facebook, make sure you go on and, and like us. What do we like? Yeah, we like on Facebook and we, and make sure you follow us on Twitter. Um, and we'd love to have each and every one of you as part of Team Open Chain uh, join the team. We've got 46, seven days left and uh, looking forward to pushing through and having a, uh, the next Attorney General as Mark Open Chain. So thanks all. I want you to know that I was going to introduce and use a lot of it is for the aging and she has worked with nursing homes and I'm sure that that has a lot to do with Mark's interest in elder abuse that's that's a big deal uh, question what the uh, tax credit percentage is but he, he has been a defender in the state senate for uh, improving Virginia's education system across all spectrums. Um, so I think you can be confident, you know, as attorney general, his job will be to mostly defend, um, he, taking a different role from what he does as state senator. Um, so I think that that comes to, you know, who are the policymakers and things of that nature. But I can assure you that school choice is definitely something, and improving education is something that Mark has stood for.